Hello everyone, my name is Oinam Washington and I am presenting this talk as a part of Mitsna's project Teach a Topic. At first, I would like to thank Mitsna for giving such a wonderful opportunity to all of us to share our knowledge and experience to this public platform and help us improve ourselves through this process. So coming to my topic, have you ever heard of the term DNA fingerprinting or ever wondered how the forensic science works in solving crimes? And how does the COVID-19 testing is conducted or how do we know that a person is COVID-19 positive or negative? Well, the answer to these questions lies to a basic technique known as the polymerase chain reaction. So the topic of my today's talk is polymerase chain reaction, a revolutionary tool in molecular biology. Before going any further to our particular technique, let's have a look at this picture. This is a picture of evolutionary tree of life. So starting from the lowest microbes consisting of bacteria and fungi to the highly evolved we humans and the plants, all the life forms possess DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid or RNA ribonucleic acid as their genetic material. And this genetic material is very important as far as our PCR technique is concerned since it can be considered as the basis or the hallmark of this PCR technique. So what is PCR or what is polymerase chain reaction? It is a simple technique to amplify a segment of DNA to make numerous copies of it inside a laboratory. This technique was first invented by Kerry Banks Mullist in 1983 for which he got the Nobel Prize in 1993. So why the name polymerase chain reaction? The word polymerase is used since this technique involved an enzyme known as the polymerase enzyme. The most common polymerase enzyme that we use all over the world is the tech polymerase which is an enzyme isolated from the bacteria known as the thermus aquaticus which is naturally found in hot springs. And this technique involved a series of continuous reaction inside the tube, hence the name polymerase chain reaction. So let's see what are the basic components which are required to run a PCR reaction. One of the most important basic requirement is the DNA sample from which the multiple copies of the target region has to be met. And then we require a set of primer. A primer is a stretch of nucleotide of non sequences which we have to design in our laboratory according to our need. This primer has a specific complementary region to the target region and it will bind the DNA sample and amplify the target regions. And then we require the nucleotides which are the basic letters of the DNA and then of course the tech polymerase which is the enzyme. And then this all the components will be mixed in a proper mixing buffer to maintain the proper pH. And after all these components are mixed and they will be put in a PCR tube like this and this tube will be put inside a PCR machine like this. So the next step is to run the PCR. Inside the PCR tube there are three important steps are occurring. So the first step of PCR is the denaturation step where the double stranded DNA is separated into two single stranded DNA at a temperature of 94 degrees Celsius. The second step is known as the annealing step which occur at 50 to 60 degrees Celsius where the primer will bind to its specific complementary region in the target DNA. And the third step is known as the extension step where the primer with the help of polymerase enzyme they will synthesize a new strand of DNA from the original DNA or the older DNA template. So this process will be repeated again and again. So in the first cycle from a single copy of double stranded DNA, two, uh, two copies of double stranded DNA will be formed and in the second cycle four copies will be formed and in the third eight copies and so on. So by the 30th cycle from a single DNA copy there will be 10 to the power 9 copies of double stranded DNA will be formed. So this amplified DNA copies can be easily detected by using a technique known as agarose gel electrophoresis. So this is a typical agarose gel electrophoresis unit 
Here, this is the Agaros gel and we have to load our sample which is the PCR amplified product into these wells. And this gel should run under an electric field. Since the DNA is negatively charged, when it is subjected under an electric field, they will try to move towards the positive end of the gel. So after running for an about 30 minutes to one and a half hour, it can be visualized under a UV light. So here is an agarose gel which is visualized under the UV light. So here you can see the presence of this amplified bands in a specific size. So the presence of these bands in the specific sites indicates the positive amplification of our target region. So this is how the PCR helps in detection of specific target DNA from any organism. Now coming to the types of PCR, there are different types of PCR which we use according to our need. But one of the most important and the most frequently heard by the public during the past two years is the combination of these two types known as the QRT-PCR which is used for the testing of COVID-19. Since the COVID-19 virus it's consists of RNA particle so this RNA particle has to be first converted into complementary DNA by a process known as the RT-PCR and then this complementary DNA is subjected to QPCR. So the whole process is known as QRT-PCR. Now let's see some more applications of PCR in different fields. PCR can be used in environmental microbiology field for checking the water quality control uh, by detecting the presence of any bacteria and other harmful microbes in the water and also it has applications in food and agricultural sector for detection and diagnosis of different plant pathogens and it has an immense importance in medical science for detection and diagnosis of different human pathogens and diseases and also in the production of vaccines and other drugs. And it has also importance in understanding the evolution and other phylogenetic studies and also in the paleontology studies. So with this, by now we can conclude that the PCR is such a basic, inevitable and a versatile technique which revolutionized the field of molecular biology. With this, I would like to conclude my talk with the quote, the science of today is the technology of tomorrow. Thank you so much for your time and patience.